Oh my Oath Breakers and Realm Shakers out there. It is March of the Machines release weekend, and to celebrate that, I have another Oathbreaker deck. Today, I'm covering Chandra Hope's Beacon. This is going to be a combo all will be one deck that can go infinite with some of the cards in our deck. Let's get into the deck tech and I'll explain some of the reasoning for the cards I chose. Chandra Hope's Beacon is a 4 and 2 red 5 loyalty planeswalker that says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell we copy it and may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers once per turn. That's going to be semi-important because there are certain pieces of our deck we'll need to get in order to be successful. Um, All Will Be One says whenever we put a counter on a creature or permanent we control, uh, we can deal one damage to anything else. We're running quite a few Planeswalkers in the deck, so we can kind of machine gun fire opponents and things down that way. But also there's a couple permanents I'll make sure to point out that will actually go infinite with that spell. Her plus two is to add two mana in any combination of colors that will ramp us. There is a sub storm theme in the deck just to try to help us build up enough damage so we can get over the line. Her plus one lets us exile the top five cards of, cards of our library and until our next turn we may cast instant or sorcery spells from among those cards. That's really just a way to help us dig deeper and her minus X is to deal X damage to each of up to two targets. In a perfect world, that would knock two players out of the game or take two Planeswalkers off the board. We're not going to worry too much about it. It's not the main reason she's in this stack. Next, we have up our signature spell, which is Burning Sun's Fury. For one in a red, it says up to two target creatures we control, gain plus two plus O oh, and first, oh, sorry, in haste until the end of turn and we can convoke it. So later in the game, we can play it multiple times simply by tapping the creatures we have. Chandra Acolyte of Flame costs one and two red. We can zero her to put a loyalty counter on every red planeswalker we control. We can create two one one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of their next up in step, or we may cast a target instant or sorcery card mana value three or less from our graveyard. If that spell would be put into our graveyard, we exile it instead. Next, we have Chandra Dressed to Kill. She also ramps us one plus one her, but that deals one damage up to one target player Planeswalker. Can start off all will be one. Her next plus one says exile the top card of your library. If it's red, you may cast it this turn. And her minus seven, again, lets us dig five cards into our library and exile them. Uh, we get an emblem that says whenever we cast a red spell, this emblem will deal X damage to any target where X is the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. Some of these exiling effects, we're gonna wanna wait to start using until we have about five mana because we do wanna be able to cast all will be one if and when it comes up. Chandra Fire Artisan for 2 and 2 red is a 4 loyalty planeswalker that whenever loyalty counters are removed from it, we can deal that much damage target opponent or planeswalker. 3 plus 1 or we can exile a card from our library and we can play it this turn. If we minus 7 her, we can exile the top 7 cards of our library and we may play them this turn. Kibble Rakish Instigator for 2 and a red, make sure our opponents can't gain life, which is really important to our deck's game plan. He also makes us 1-1 one, one Devil Creature Tokens that say when the creature dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. Tibble the Fiend Blooded is also another Tibble Planeswalker for 2 red mana. He will let us draw and discard at random, kind of like a mini gamble. His minus four will let us steal damage to target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand. That's a great way to punish people who are drawing a lot of cards during cor course of game. Sorry about that. And his minus six lets us gain control of all creatures until end of turn. We untap them and they gain haste. You'll notice that some of these planeswalkers can also act as kind of a win condition in a bad situation or if we can't get the rest of our deck off. Next, we have Aki Rock Speaker for one in a red. When it enters the battlefield, it will refund us a red mana, so maybe it'll help us play extra spells in the turn or make sure we have enough for what we want to do. Bergy God of Storytelling costs two in a red. 
and is a 3-3. Whenever we cast a red spell, we ramp one red mana until end of turn. We don't lose that mana. We don't have any creatures that boast, so we won't be using that ability. The backside of Bergy is Harn Herfell. Harnfell, sorry, Horn of Bounty. For four and a red, it allows us to discard cards to exile the top two cards of our library. We may play those cards each turn, this turn. Both sides of this card are excellent pieces for a deck that wants to dig very deep or wants to maybe do some sort of sto uh, storm shenaniganing. Cacophony Scamp for one wet red is a 1-1. One, one. When it would deal damage to a player, we can sacrifice it. If we do proliferate, that is very good with our Planeswalkers, and that's going to also trigger anything we haven't played with counters on it multiple times for all will be one to just machine gun fire people out of the game and do a whole bunch of damage. Uh, when it does die, it also will deal damage equal to its power to any target, so that works pretty well with our signature spell. Next up, we have Fernatical Firebrand for one red. It's a one with haste that we can tap and surprise to deal one damage to any target. You'll see why we want some of those small additional damage abilities later on. Goblin Bush Whacker is a one one for one red and we can kick it for one red. If we do all of our creatures, we get plus one plus oh and haste till end of turn when it enters the battlefield, which is amazing. It's kind of the closest thing we get to an overrun in red and it's cheap. Goblin Chain Whirler is a 3 3 with first strike. When it enters the battlefield, it's going to do one damage to each of our opponents, each creature they control, and each planeswalker they control. So, this can be a lot of value when we need it. Grinning Ignis for two and a red is a 2 2 elemental that we can pay one red, return it to its owner's hand, and get that two generic mana and one red back. And we can only activate that ability as a sorcery. But in the event we're trying to kind of dig deep into our deck and play as many spells as possible to win, getting that mana back on a late turn is amazing. It can also pay most of the cost for an early all will be one. Gutter Snipe for two and a red says when you cast instant or sorcery spell, it deals two damage to any target. Oh, I'm sorry, two damage to each opponent, which is still really good. He's a, a great hate engine that your opponents may target down and try to get rid of. If you're early in the game, hold off playing it. If you start dealing damage to all the opponents at the same time too early before you're ready, people will target you down and go after you. You kind of want to play this at the right time where you feel like you're close to you know, getting getting a win. Franco Mob Boss for two and two red is a three three goblin. We can tap to create uh, to create X one one red goblin creature tokens where X is the number of goblins we control. We are running a sub-theme of goblins in the deck, as you may have noticed. Legion Loyalist is a 1-1 hasty goblin that says when it attacks with at least two of their creatures we control, creatures we control gain first strike and trample until end of turn and can be blocked by creature tokens this turn. Runaway Steamkim for one in a red is a 1-1. Whenever we play a red spell, we can put a 1-1 counter on it up to three counters. Uh, we can remove three counters from it to refund ourselves three red mana. Again, it's just another little place for us to store for a big turn. Cirque, Prospect, uh, Cirque Prospector for one red lets us sacrifice goblins to generate red mana. Soul Scar Mage for one red is a 1 2 with prowess, which means whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell in the turn, actually, a non creature spell in the turn. It will get plus one, plus one till end of turn, which is generally pretty amazing for storming off and playing a whole bunch of stuff. But it also says if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, we put that many minus one, minus one counters on instead. If we go and do one damage to one of our opponent's creatures, why all will be one is out, we can turn that into a minus one, minus one counter. That will trigger or, or will be one again and put another minus one minus one counter on another creature. This can become a devastating one sided board wipe all in a one mana spell that just works well with all will be one. Red Terror works in a similar way for three and a red. It's a four three that says whenever a red source we control deals damage to one or more permanents and our players, we put one one counters on it. Every time we put a counter on Red Terror, it's going to trigger All Will Be One again. 
Tybalt's Rager for one in a red is a 1-2. When it dies, it deals one damage to any target. Again, with uh, other abilities in play, getting that one damage out there will start the token combo. If we pay one in a red, we can pump it by plus two plus O until end of turn. Faithless Looting for one in a red lets us draw two cards and then discard two cards and we can flash it back for two in a red. This is mostly just to help us dig deeper. We're really looking to try to find all will be one for the cards that care about it. If we don't get it, it's still an instant or sorcery we, we can play, which will trigger prowess and other things we're trying to do. Gamble will let us literally go and find the spell we need at the risk of then having to have a, an opponent randomly discard a card from our hand, so we may get it and lose it. So high risk, high reward, but when it comes to tutors in mono red, this is what we get. Skewer the critics for two in a red will deal three damage to any targets, but if a uh, creature, if a player sorry, has lost life this turn, you can pay one red instead. Vandal Blast will destroy either target enchantment we don't control or all enchantments we don't control, which is very helpful for the deck. Battle Hymn will let us add a red mana for each creature we control. Carthardic Pyre will let us either choose to deal three damage target creature planeswalker or discard two cards, up to two cards, sorry, and then draw that many cards. Chaos Warp lets us actually forces target opponent to shuffle a permanent they control into their library and then reveal cards from top of the library. If it is a permanent card, then they put it onto the battlefield. This is just a great destroy spell that can hit a planeswalker or any other problematic permanent that is holding up our game plan. Lightning Bolt for one red deals three damage to any target. In this deck, it's basically a removal spell, but it can go to face if you have a lot of trouble it will also hit a planeswalker so it does a lot shock is the same but a little bit worse tybalt's trickery will let us counter target spell then we choose one two or three at random its controller then mills that many cards and then exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card with a different name than that spell they may cast a card without paying its mana cost then put the exiled cards on the bottom of their library in a random order there's two ways we can play this. We can counter one of our own cheap spells. It will uh, count as another instant sorcery for a turn and hopefully maybe dig us into all will be one or we can use it to deal with a problematic spell an opponent casts. Contagion class for two is an artifact when it enters the battlefield. We put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. That will trigger all will be one. If we pay for and tap it, we can proliferate, which will again trigger all will be one. So this card does a lot. For that reason, we're running Glistening Sphere. When it enters the battlefield, it enters tapped, but it also proliferates. And it's a mana rock that lets us tap for one mana of any color. Ring of Three Wishes. When it enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it, when it enters, it'll do three damage to a, a target of our choice because of all will be one, but if we pay five and tap it, remove a wish counter from it, we can search our library for a card and put that card into our hand and then shuffle. So this will help us go and get exactly the card we need. This is probably the best one in the deck for that. Skull Clamp lets us sacrifice our little one wound creatures in, that are in order to draw more cards and dig deep. All will be one. Let's actually read this rather than just go off my recollection and memory. For three and two red, it's an enchantment. Whenever we would put one or more counters on a permanent or player or will be one deals that much damage to target opponent, creature an opponent controls, or planeswalker an opponent controls. So it'll hit any permanent but battles. Descent into Avernus costs two and a red. At the beginning of our upkeep, we put two descent counters on it, thus trigger, triggering all will be one. Then each player creates x amount of treasure tokens equal to the number of counters on it and then each player takes x damage where x is the number of counters on it so this does a lot for us <laughs> quest for the pure flame also combos with our commander when a source we control would deal damage to an opponent we put a quest counter on quest for the pure flame we can remove four quest counters from it and sack it to double our damage for the turn but it's almost better not to do that because we do one damage from any source of our choice. A counter goes on quest. Uh, then our enchantment, or oh, will be one, will deal one damage. That will trigger quest to get another counter, which will trigger or oh, will be one again. So 
so on and so forth. Dark Depths made this deck oddly, and you don't have to run it. This is just a personal choice, but because it enters play with 10 counters on it, which is 10 damage to any of those targets I mentioned a second ago. It's actually an amazing card in this deck. You're not often going to get the 2020, but why not, right? Running Karn's Bastion for the Proliferate and Mountains, and that's the whole of the deck. I really do hope you guys enjoyed that deck tech, and thank you for staying with me till the end. If you have a chance, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great March of the Machines weekend.